few of that. I remember. Embarrassing. But I looked small this time, at least. Oh, shit, I forgot to check. Um, now's not a good time to sniff my armpits, is it? No. <laughs> no. I'm tempted, though. But no, that, that would be uncouth. I learned that word from Ali. Uncouth. So hard to pronounce with a Somali tongue, but no problem for him, though. Born and bred, Hertfordshire, brother fish and chips, curry cream and jam, beans on toast. It was the emails, wasn't it? Shit. It's never a good idea to send emails at 3 a.m. Damn it to hell, I am not ready. Small talk. Yeah, um, yeah, I learned how to do that in England. Um, I can talk about uh, the weather, inflation, C-list um, celebrities, everything but holes and coconut oil and language. Small talk. Yeah. No, fuck small talk, yeah? Let's, let's, how about some tea, yeah? Let's have some tea before we talk about holes and, and coconut oil and, and language. Like, proper Somali tea, fresh off the pot. It's the only Somali thing you like, isn't it, Ali? Well, that and me, lols. <laughs> <laughs> At least you used to like fancy the old me. Oh, shit, sorry, I wasn't, I wasn't expecting you, but, but you're all here now and, and, and I know why. But before you... Let me explain. It all makes sense then. And, you know, before you decide, the context. Everything is different with a context, auntie. But don't worry, I'll let you add your own sugar. Like proper Somali tea. That's that. It's so sweet, your front teeth will fall out. Oh. Oh, sorry. Um... Sorry, just a bit dizzy from the medication. Um, just cutting down. Okay, um... So, how are you? Good? 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 Yes. No. Maybe. It's not easy talking about your feelings, is it? It's a bit like talking about your shit movements. I know that's not the right word. Um, <laughs> Bowel movements, that's it, yeah. No one wants to talk about bowel movements, do they? And no one wants to hear about them either, so we don't talk about them. Feelings, I mean. But we all have them, and they drive us to do good or bad. And we like to think we make these rational decisions, but it's all just driven by feelings, 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 yes? No? Maybe? Oh, right, um, where was I? Okay, uh, context. Yes. Do you know, I missed Somali tea so much last time. I just realised that this is the last chance I have to get you to understand. Um, fix up, girl. Okay. Right, Ali um, was the only one who knew where I was last time. Yeah? But he never, never came to see me. He said, he didn't want to see me in that place. Then he broke up with me. All in one late night email. But I didn't want to be there either. You know, I didn't want my friends to know. It was embarrassing. I've been to a lot of places that I didn't want to be. Like that place my mum carried me to the night the bombs fell. That... Yeah, that, that was the first link in a long chain of feelings. I like to pretend that she died of a broken heart, not the putrid hole in the side of her leg. Yeah. I knew the exact moment that she left her body. She left through her feet first, went up through her legs. Not that ugly place, that hole in the side, no, not there. Then she went up to her belly where my head lay, higher through the hole in her chest where her heart lay broken. And then finally, through the top of her head. I tried to catch her. And I said, no, mum, not you. But my hands were sore 
in a week and she just slipped through the fingers, through the gaps in between. I'm still clumsy. I was lucky though, a woman noticed me flailing and she, she carried me to a camp in Kenya where she washed me, slicked my hair down with coconut oil, pong. And she sent me to study English because, well, one day we would make it to the UK, to the US, or even down under. I didn't want to go to any of those places. I mean, especially down under. Kangaroos freak me out. Yeah, I've been to many places that I did not want to be. Look, just a little longer, please. Just, I haven't finished a context, my feelings. I tried to explain to Ali many times to help him understand this chain of feelings. I mean, I hadn't committed a crime. And I told him about what I felt about the police when they questioned me. I was 14. 14. Look, just a little longer, please. Just listen. So we made it to the UK from the camp, my new mum and I. And I thought I was safe in England, at school. I didn't know that children could hurt other children. And the police, well, was it consensual, they asked. Well, what? What's consensual, I asked back. Oh, did you say no? Of course I said no. Ah yeah, but did you say no in English? And I had to like rack my brain the word the word no. How had I said the, the actual word no in English? The word no, like did it have to be that word no? Like weren't other words okay? Like like stop? Or get off, or or help. Did it have to be that one word? No, one word, two letters standing before justice, two fucking fish and chip letters standing before justice. But I'm clumsy, I am. I, I must have said no in Somalia and and not noticed. Otherwise, he'd have stopped. Yeah. I mean, if I'd have said no in English, he would have stopped. I hadn't made myself clear enough. I hadn't enunciated it enough properly for him to understand. No! But you don't understand, like, you don't choose your words when feelings get in the way. I mean, feelings don't choose a language or an accent. They just, they just express. They just latch on to this chain. Do you know what I mean? So, I tried to ask my doctor when I was 17, is it possible to get raped in English and say no in Somali? Was it a thing? Was it an actual thing? Because this chain was getting longer and just wrapping and wrapping itself around my body and just hurting me. And he told me to stop talking in riddles, retake my GCSEs, and that I was <laughs> letting my new mum down. I must have let her down so bad because she just gave up and died. Right mess. You know, I still wonder if you ever love me, Ali. Yes? No? Maybe. I mean, I asked because... So I threw a few things around when I got depressed. And I sent you a few long emails when I got out. 
He wore me down with his etiquette classes. Do this, say that, and go there. Larding up, bring a pocket full of poses. Like he wanted me, but he kept trying to change me so he didn't want me. But then he kept trying to change me so he did want me. I ran out of space. But you get it? Like, I had no more room for another confused feeling to latch onto this long chain of feelings. Did he love me? Did he love me? No. I had no more room. You'll never understand that, will you? No matter how many times I tell you my story, you just pick out its mispronunciations and its legal loopholes and its shaky structures, but never the feelings. You'll never understand my loss or my helplessness. People go say, please just let me finish my tea. Fish and chips, and you cotton cream and jam, and you fucking 